Hello, everyone, and welcome to Something Rotten, episode 4 of a Max Payne 3 miniseries. My name is Jacob Geller. I'm here with Blake Hester. Hi, thanks for having me. I've been a longtime fan. Jacob, I heard you recently say you're not a fan of Slipknot. I was curious why that is. <laughs> Blake, we're not getting into this, and we're also here with a uh, uh, game critique extraordinaire <laughs> and recent Max Payne 3 player, oh. Zach Frazier. Oh, Bad idea to have me, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant bad idea to play Max Payne 3. And no, I like, wow, no, no. Way to no. throw a wrench into these words. <laughs> Fighting words right off the bat. Um, so this is, uh, if you're checking in in the fourth <laughs> episode for whatever reason, uh, we're going uh, chunk by chunk. So this is chapters 10, 11, and 12 of Max Payne 3. This is our penultimate episode mm-hmm. of this podcast. We've only got two chapters left in the game real psyched about it um but before we start talking about that zach talk about your history with max Payne 3 for a minute (laughs) did you just play it for the first time like very recently? yeah so um my relationship with max Payne 3 is just i knew of it you know i i knew the first two games uh the first one is sort Mm -hmm. of like has this weird place in my childhood psyche because like i just know that there's the the part where He's running down a hallway, like sort of a dream sequence when his family just died. And like, there's like, I don't know if he has like bloody footprints or something that's following them, but like, it just scarred me. Like, <laughs> it's just, it was a very scary moment and like something that raw and like, like a family getting killed. I don't know. I probably built it up more than it was. Were you, were you playing it or were you like watching someone My play it? My cousin played when, it. When <laughs> were you scarred? It, it, I was okay. like, I was like six or seven or something, you know, I'm an, I was born in 95, so I don't know when it came out, but, uh, it was probably pretty. Is it when he, is it when he's running on the like trail of blood? Yes. Yeah. That, that makes okay, more sense. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, so gotcha. like, it's just, yeah, this impression to me, like I haven't played it. I've seen people, you know, put up videos about it or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And then, so fast forward to probably a year or two ago, uh, my friend uh, who makes videos, Nova Canoe, he made a video talking about the Max Payne series. And he was like, oh, the game three is good if you play it, you know, like the first two, you know, try not to use cover as much. It's like, okay, that looks kind of mm-hmm. cool. And then this probably isn't a good reason or like a good inspiration to play it. But when Jacob made his video on headshots i was like damn those headshots though like i know it's like morally (laughs) questionable we've talked about it but we've (laughs) you know i know it's kind of weird to want to do that but like i want to do that so there was that and then jacob said he was going to do this podcast and i was like i don't know like what gets me to want to play something or like do something is like it's the last thing that someone mentioned basically so i'm like well that's the thing that's on my mind i'll fucking go for it so yeah sure interesting and what did you like what did you think the game was going to be before you started playing it i mean you had obviously been kind of exposed through you know various various means but like did you have a mental image of like ah playing through max Payne 3 is gonna feel like this i think so i mean having watched enough you know footage and stuff And no one saying it, like, does a weird twist or, like, it has, like, different mechanics or stuff. I was like, this looks like a Rockstar game, like, sort of the heavy-ish movement or whatever combined with, you know, like, slow-mo jumping and shooting. I I didn't know how precise it was going to feel. I'm playing on mouse and keyboard. Um, So that's kind of interesting. But otherwise, Mm. I felt like I kind of knew what I was in for. We have talked a lot about the uh, mouse keyboard versus controller divide oh, yeah. and it like really affecting the feel of the I, game. I've listened to um, all the episodes beforehand, so I'm, you know, oh, okay. I'm, I'm up on <laughs> cool. that. You research. might be the first guest who's yeah, done yeah. that. Ah, so. <laughs> always great to meet a fan. Always great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that uh, mouse and keyboard to controller divide, I'll say maybe got one member of the panel to lightly punch his couch today. Oh, I can't even imagine how you play this game, dude. It sounds ridiculous. I, you know what it is? It's like I want to almost 
instantly replay this game on mouse and keyboard, though Please. I don't really have the means to do uh-huh. so right now because I feel like I'm not getting the optimum experience playing this because I'm playing it like 50 50 like gears of war and mm-hmm. how i think max Payne should be played so when i go into a like larger combat arena i am hunkered down undercover and not doing anything fun just like pop or like hide shoot hide shoot hide shoot rinse and repeat till it's over and then there's every now and then where it's like okay there's like four guys in here i can do the cool john woo shit but mm-hmm. i feel like i'm not playing it and getting the like actual satisfying game feel out of it to use kind of a cliche term there i don't like feel like i get to enjoy what jacob and perhaps you get out of this game yeah. or even like aj on and uh jv on previous episodes mm-hmm. it's like playing it it's, at a it's disadvantage. weird because this was a game that <laughs> one of the reasons that we're doing this you know game club is that you brought up this game virtually every week sure, you know, no, or every I mean, opportunity like, i it, Part of that is Max Payne has become a bit on Game Query. Another part of that mm-hmm. is, like, I have been a Max Payne fan for the majority of my life at this point. And then the other, the third part of that is, like, I don't dislike this game by any means. I am older now and perhaps a little more critical of the media I consume, and I have less patience for things I did when I was younger that this is like sticking out to me a lot more than it maybe did when I played it, you know, a few years ago or when I first played it when I was a teenager, but it by no means does it like make me hate the game or anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, well, and it is, you know, we, we've talked about this every week, but this set of levels in particular, I think is going to bring (laughs) that up because these are some hard chapters. Sure. I think, uh, just difficulty wise, like, I really like yeah. these chapters, mm-hmm. but like, man, if you if you are watching this on YouTube and have got like my gameplay going in the background, you'll just see me die a bunch because I like ate shit. Yeah, you know, I think a there's a bunch of times. I think there's also some like fucking cheap deaths that come, especially yeah. in the last chapter we played that uh, maybe led one cast member to lightly punch his couch <laughs> while playing this. <laughs> It's, we'll never know who it just happened yeah i think it was zach actually he Yo, was talking I'm a big before couch the puncher podcast. man <laughs> i was i no, the, <laughs> sorry go ahead i, I just want to say i was playing super mario 3d world recently i was stomping so like that's my personality <laughs> <laughs> i'm usually like legendarily infuriating game <laughs> super mario 3d world. i usually like keep it pretty level-headed when i when i game out i'm not a, a rage gamer or mm-hmm. a rage quitter by any means but, like, there were just some cheap shots in yeah. that last chapter we played that I could not look past. Like, things like people running around a corner yes. and fucking eating three fourths of your health before you even have a chance to, like, register that they're mm-hmm. there. That's the... Or not knowing a level you're playing is on a timer uh, until you die <laughs> because of that timer. <laughs> Big sucks. Yeah, like, there's just some people that are, like, around corners that won't trigger until you go around that corner. And it's, like, yeah. that's, like, the trial and error sort of stuff that, I mean, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of it. But, like, there's stuff like that where it's, like, am I supposed to just be dodge, like, jumping into every corner and be ready or, you know. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll get on to the, the building destruction in due time. But this starts, uh, this, this section today starts... Um, Right where the last one ended, which was uh, with Marcella dying in pretty much the worst way imaginable. Um, Until gets... we see people die in a much worse way <laughs> later. <laughs> That's in the true. Game. Uh, the worst way imaginable so far. Yeah. Um, and and so then uh, Max is with Giovanna, and they're just trying to get the hell out of Dodge, basically. Um, uh, Max is incredibly conspicuous, wearing a wife beater and two pistols, and being a you know six foot tall bald man. But they're kind of trying to lay low. They're they're using like public phones and shit, and then they kind of just go into a yard somewhere and start shooting. Is that yeah. right? <laughs> it's like it's like a a bus yard, honestly, where like buses have been laid out to pasture. Yeah. But can I can I say a small detail I really like in this section is Rockstar yeah. is really good with uh sweat stains. I think Oh yeah, were he's a sweaty. lot of 
Yeah, and there were a lot of great examples in like Grand Theft Auto Five too, and this game. Like Max's shirt just looks so gross. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like it's normal to see a video game character go through some shit, but their clothes are still pristine because like a developer might not want to go through the headache of adding extra like. I don't know what that is, a texture. I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm talking about here. But, like, Max's shirt is, like, gross and green, and the sweat looks like it should be where it is. And I spent more time than I should have just marveling at this disgusting shirt in this chapter, being like, fuck yeah, that's gross. I love it. Something else I want to say about the shirts is that you can sort of see the wrinkles moving, like, when they walk. Like, if you look yeah. at their backs, like, their shirt kind of bends and stuff. That was kind of a neat little animation touch. Yeah, there's... um. Uh, we played it a, a couple couple episodes ago now, but the one where you're in the office and you're wearing a suit mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, Max is in a suit, but it's just, sh I mean, it's clear it's just been like stuffed in a closet <laughs> for yeah. like three years and it's so wrinkly and yeah, then the way it moves is so detailed. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was thinking about this while playing today that almost every level has Max wearing something different. Yeah. yeah. Which seems like it w wouldn't be necessary like if if before i play this game you were like how many outfit changes do you think he has i'd be like one he wears that uh, fucking and in Hawaiian fact, shirt. <laughs> yeah he has he has like 12 different outfits occasionally he puts um, a trench so coat on over the hawaiian shirt that's it mm-hmm uh, and he's got multiple facial hairstyles and, and head hairstyles. Yeah, he's really, he's a changing man. When he shaves his head, too, like, there are haircut scenes in other video games. I think, like, Red Dead is probably a good example where the camera just kind of cuts away and you don't see it actually happening. But the cutscene in this game, they actually show, like, the paths over his scalp where the hair is removed. And you can see the hair falling, which I thought was, like, an interesting and detailed touch. And to the point of all this, this game is making my PS3 run, like, absolute Oh, I shit. can't imagine. <laughs> Especially these later chapters where things are getting really crazy. Grant, I'm playing on, like, a Generation 2 PS3. Um, so it's pretty old at this point. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was having audio dip in and out, frame drops, like, oh crazy. Like, at one point, a cutscene, like... The audio and everything kept playing, but the just visual, like, the frame stopped for a few seconds, and the game had to catch back up with itself. Like, it's chugging under this baby. That's that's interesting. I mean, it does feel, you know, we've talked about this before, but it's like it's Rockstar bringing all of its detail <laughs> and focus into, like, a hundred square feet yeah you know for for each thing and so it's crazy detailed and just just well, let's keep talking about the haircuts <laughs> i love when he shaves his head that it's like a shitty job yeah. of it that you yeah. can see it's like it looks like when i mow the lawn and there are like <laughs> the lines in between the yeah. razors where it's like ah oh, you didn't get those very well. as someone who um, has shaved his own head that is true to life like when you do it there's just these gross patches on top of your head but i like that max is such a shitbag that he never fixes it throughout the game like three chapters yeah. later there's still just these patches on his head it's like i'll let it i'll let it grow back in um so okay so you're with you're with giovanna She's freaked out. Max is also pretty freaked out, yeah. but I think try and try not to show it. Um, and then you basically just go into like the here's where you kill people spot um, and you hide for a while um, and they start popping heads and G Giovanna just immediately starts panicking and kind of running all over the place in a way that's not clear to me if it's supposed to be comedic or you know kind of actually seriously dealing with what a person would be going through here what what was your take on just kind of her, her I, flusteredness i definitely did not find it comedic like i like her i mean i like is a weird word to use like i find it appropriate her level of just how distraught she is in a way mm -hmm. that games normally don't do, like when you play something like The Last of Us, you the first time you kill someone in front of Ellie, she's like, oh, holy shit. And then the next person you kill, she's like, ah, seen, been here, done that. Uh, but Giovanna, like, never gets used to the violence in a way I really appreciate because she is seeing, like, by nature of it being a video game, Max kill, like, 100 people per room. And she's, like, never chill with it. Um, but I, I, I didn't find it comedic. I'm curious what you mean by that. I mean, there's there's that scene where there's like there's snipers on a roof and you can kind of see their lasers mm -hmm. and she's just like, whoa, 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 and kind of like running back and forth oh. while the lasers okay. are, are yeah, tracking yeah. over her. Okay. And it's just, 
you know, I think, yeah, for, for the most part, I think that she's, this is kind of damning with faint praise. I think she's probably the best written woman, like woman in this game. Sure. Yeah. Um, which is you she's know the most she's written alive for more than five minutes on screen yeah. Yeah. which makes her different than most and to um, be fair most still... of her most of her lines in this game are just screaming yeah but for th- there's something yeah i don't know i found her uh, like i found her more likable than i felt like was earned mm-hmm. you know even though she didn't do too much maybe it's just that they have really good performance capture in yeah. this. And so, like, her physicality and whatever seemed much more legit than the normal kind of escort this helpless character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, Zach, how'd you feel about Giovanna? Oh, uh, I just, I didn't find her fun. Like, I don't, I don't feel like they framed it as funny. Like, I could see why you might have laughed if she was, you know, darting around trying to dodge their fire, and then she can die if you don't do it, like, correctly. So you, I mm-hmm. guess I could see that as, like, a weird dark humor moment, but I don't think it was intentionally so. I think she was, yeah, she was just kind of normally just kind of scared or whatever. She didn't say anything, like, weird either. I feel like they would have given her some lines or something that would have, I don't know, like, you know, they like to make fun of the rich or something. Maybe they'd say something yeah. kind of like, not like, oh, I dropped my caviar or whatever, but, you know, something <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> something like that. Giovanna constantly talking about her caviar. <laughs> but I was actually, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, was, I mean, she seems like a sympathetic character, so I don't think they tried to make her, like, you know, look like mm. a fool or anything. Sure. I was going to ask I, I, a second ago. I didn't know whether or not she could die if you were, like, inactive or missed too many of your shots. At least at that part, yeah, because I okay. fucked up. But I don't know about later. I mean, the bus okay, you can, gotcha. I, the bus has a health bar, so yeah, I guess there right, too. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Sure. I'm too much of a pro gamer, though. Didn't, didn't couldn't, couldn't die there. Um, <laughs> oh, importantly for Giovanna, so um, before all the shooting pops up, she's throwing up, and Max is like, stay calm. And she's like, I am calm. I'm also pregnant. And so there's that little twist, yeah, which yeah. is kind of like, what can a woman be in Max Payne? Oh, well, she can be pregnant. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like... It, it, it doesn't really play into the rest of the level But at it, all. like, works for Max Payne's lore or whatever, you know? <laughs> where, yeah, like, he's like, now I have to extra not let her die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every woman in the Max Payne world has to either die or be, like, a like mother figure, you know? So I guess it makes sense <laughs> usually both right i like the touch of this this is a weird place to go with this but i kind of like the touch of her throwing up out of stress and being pregnant it's a weird touch that like most games just would kind of ignore that but somehow like adds to her how distraught she is that like it's just another thing she can't control you know like this game is built upon escalations, even down to like intimate moments where Giovanna's like inconvenienced by her own body because she can't stop throwing up. Small touch, mm-hmm. but I do enjoy, I appreciate like little details like that that this game kind of throws in. Yeah. Um, so let's see. You keep fighting. Here's a weird little detail. This level had, you might have been able to find these before, but I didn't. This level has a pretty obvious TV that you can mm-hmm. just hang out and watch a show. Yeah. Did, you, did you guys do this? I didn't in this See. one. There's one in the um there's the where you in the level where you go try to get Fabiana. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, oh, in the forest. Right. Yeah, in the forest. There's a TV you can watch in the room where they have her held captive when you like walk in and she had just been taken out of there. So in this level, you watch an episode of Baseball Bat Boy, uh, which is a a cartoon, you know, performed entirely in Spanish about uh, an, uh, a boy who has a baseball bat. But in the episode that we were watching, he got old and had a golf club instead. And it was like, oh, Baseball Bat Boy, what's he going to do? Is that that character uh, from Max Payne 2? Is it? Hold on, I'll look it up. You keep talking then. Um, Zach, what was the what was the first one? Do you I, do you remember? Is it always like a cartoon, or do they do different I believe things? It, I, I first played through. I watched it. Uh, I didn't watch it, or you know, it, it had been a bit. I kind of forgot. But I think it was news, possibly, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. where Fabiana was. But yeah, I I, I wasn't paying attention. I apologize. 
<laughs> so yeah, Baseball Bat Boy is from Max Payne Two, and I don't spe- remember the uh, specifics of why he is in that game, but I do recall at one point he is like a side character that comes with you and like shoots people oh. with you. Um, but yeah, oh. I, I didn't know that was in there. He's a retu- he's a yeah, reoccurring character. Yeah, I mean character. it feels <laughs> it's it's weird because it, it feels very remedy in that it's a kind of a little less self serious mm-hmm. or whatever than than Max Payne Three, but it also feels like you know GTA Four had you know all their tv shows they had like republican space rangers and shit that you could watch on tv so it is it is not uh, unheard of for rockstar to do something like this but it feels extra out of place here because it's basically like fabiana's hiding in a dumpster and you're like i'm gonna watch an episode of baseball bat boy Ludo narrative dissonance, they call it. <laughs> or Max is just a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe it's actually just right along where his character is. He's kind of extra um, shitty in these chapters we play. Not so much this specific one, but the second chapter we played just kind of like shows Max's incompetence at an all time high. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so does anything else important happen here? Not really. We have a we have a fun set piece. Um, there is the the bus that you you know that's this has i think a pretty good level name uh the name of this level is it's driver shoot sister <laughs> which is something that max says um to giovanna when he's like he's like have you ever driven a bus before and she's like no he's like have you ever shot anyone she's like no he's like well it's driver shoot um and so then she drives a bus poorly uh Mm. through through the streets and you kind of smash through some gas stations and whatever and then land in a just a you just smack into a wall basically and and chill out there i think that bus is my favorite set piece in the game so far i really love that moment like i'm a fan of any moment in a game where you notice like your ammo is now infinite and you know it's just time to pop the fuck off but Mm -hmm. like I like the lack of skill in the whole moment. Like, Giovanna is doing a terrible job. Any other video game, and it'd be like you were driving this bus in the Daytona 500, but she is just crashing this into everything around her, and it makes it, like, pretty hard to aim, and it's somewhat funny that, like, nothing is going right in this moment, but also, like, Mm -hmm. it's really great to, like, land a few bullets into a gas station and blow it up and take out four people like it's a really great high octane moment how did the when you're in the bus shooting at all the cars how did that run on the ps3 i feel like that might have uh <laughs> it chugged <laughs> yeah okay. it chugged but that part also whips ass it yeah. the the over the shoulder zoom in that moment goes in way farther than like normal like mm-hmm. if you're just in a normal encounter um shooting over cover that makes it look like super cinematic like you are really zooming in on them in that moment and just like shit is going fucking haywire there's like 30 dudes at any given time cars are blowing up like just awesome awesome moments right right after each other and i think you i think you touched on a a reason why this set piece works more than some of the other ones which is that we're we're asked to believe this kind of like weird thing throughout the game which is that max is simultaneously pretty incompetent yeah. but also hyper competent <laughs> you know that that he he's like like you know a drunk fuck up who's getting shot all the time but also he can like slide down a stadium roof and grab the lights and do like a flip into a place yeah. And he's got and a like, lot of the set pieces are like, oh, you're flying through the air. <laughs> and this is like, you're on a bus. The bus is smashing through everything. Yeah. You are missing most of your shots and just like blowing up stuff. And it feels appropriately chaotic, I think. For sure. It, it, a lot of the game has that like Nathan Drake effect where like he'll do something colossally stupid to trigger a like set piece yet he gets through it in the like most badass John Wick way ever. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. this one, like, no one is doing anything right in this bus moment. Everyone is fucking up at an all-time high, and it's just, like, awesome. Um, so then he, you know, they crash, um, and then we get kind of the most story we've gotten, mm-hmm. you know, up to this point in the game, which is this this dude named uh, Wilson Da Silva shows up and basically just like 
tells Max what's happening. Yeah. The <laughs> is game, that, is the that game, your take on this scene? Yeah, the game is like, all right, and here's the story. <laughs> yeah. Like, it just kind of lays it all out in, like, five minutes. Um, so, Zach, I have been uh, throughout this podcast, which is, you know, my, like, I don't know, eighth or ninth time playing this game, remarkably bad at following the story <laughs> and the events. And I don't know how much to chalk this up to, like, my own inability to follow just, like, names of people and stuff, or that the game is, like, really, really confusing with this stuff. So, you know, if you're thinking about your kind of first playthrough, how much of an idea of just, like, what was going on did you have? I think I had an okay idea. Like, I I realized, like, the the big ideas right like government corruption politician uses police to further his agenda or what have you you know we'll we'll learn that they're selling uh, organs and stuff uh you know so commodifying <laughs> people uh mm-hmm. stuff like that so I, I knew the general stuff i didn't know like i don't know who runs the crush up preto or you know like who the the ufe guy is like the the dude that you have the little battle with later um but I was just like, okay, I get the general sense of what's going on, right? Like, just sort of, you were a, a patsy, and for, I guess, the the one brother that isn't the long-haired one, but he's not the one that died, he was, I guess, the politician. Like, that's how I probably thought about it. <laughs> Victor, or Rodrigo, one of them. I think I it's know. Victor. One of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so probably the the most important thing that Wilson tells you, or at least... The one that I liked the best was basically, like, you don't know who Passos is. You know, that that he, um, he's, he's like, you were sent here because you're a dumb gringo who's known for being super violent and shooting people, and that's what they wanted you to do. Yeah. And... And your, your only friend, really, in the game, Raul Passos, he's in on it. And Max is like, I knew him at the academy. And Wilson's like, did you? And he's like, I don't fucking yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, that moment is really weird. Like, Max is kind of a fucking dumbass. But that's real dumbass hours. Like, in a way that's almost unbelievable. And it, it kind of stu- bothered me in the New York level where Passa shows up and is like, remember from the academy? And Max is like, no. It I doesn't. Mean, isn't that sort of playing on the drunkenness? Like, if you think of the drunkenness as sort of like him being confused and disoriented, and then like once he cuts that off, he's trying to learn what's happening, like it makes but even, sense. But even then, like <laughs> I can't imagine a class at a police academy is that many people. And that's a, that class has to be a pretty formidable part of your life that you would yeah. probably remember the like 10 people in the academy you were there with. Like it always, it strikes me as a re- weird plot point that they probably could have written around better. I I don't know. I kind of disagree. I mean, I I understand yeah. from a kind of like literal logistics of memory perspective <laughs> how it's weird, but I do <clears throat> like the idea that you know it's kind of playing with narrative in the same way that you know any game that's like oh you think you have free will does but like the idea that this dude shows up and you go with him because it's what the game says to do and also max goes with him because he's like completely hapless in his own life and is like here's something to do i guess you know like i've been i've been sitting at this bar in new jersey for five years I guess I'll kind of go with this guy and and then finding out like no he was using you too cuz you're an idiot. <laughs> I think is is actually a pretty interesting plot point and given we've talked about in the past how likable Passos mm-hmm. is, I think it it actually kind of hits more than some of the other plot twists where mm-hmm. it's like this character we didn't really know dies yeah and you're like oh well like you know i guess that's a bummer hmm yeah i don't know it just like that that moment and a moment we'll probably talk about later on with passos just didn't really sit well with me not i mean it didn't like ruin the story for me by any means but it was like something that stuck out it's like i don't know if i buy this and the way max handles or understands the situation but 
oh well yeah uh, maybe it's just i relate to max because i also had no idea what was going on and <laughs> sure, it was yeah. i mean there's nice like, to feel some connection with the character there's like plenty of points where max's ignorance makes a ton of sense to me like max not understanding the inner workings of brazilian government you know but like yeah. i just feel like max would remember one of the dudes he was at the police academy with but it, mm-hmm. at the end of the day not that big of a deal so we kind of we kind of find out you're like, hey Max, you you're a fuck up. You should have known. Uh, and then the game flashes back to perhaps Max's biggest fuck up. <laughs> yeah. At least, <laughs> at least one of them. Uh, yeah. And the level another another good name: suntan oil, stale margaritas, and greed. Um, yeah. A level which, not built for controllers. Honestly, a level barely built for mouse and keyboard. <laughs> we, we will talk about this. Um, but but this level uh, starts on a yacht, and it's it's way we're going back in time. Uh, everyone's alive. Um, Marcelo is his true to life, just douchey self, and he's got like a bunch of a bunch of young people who are all just kind of like drugged up and partying on a yacht. Um, and then Max uh, Max is there with Passos. He gets drunk, he falls asleep, uh, and when he wakes up, there are a bunch of dudes with guns. Yeah, there are a lot of really great dark jokes in the opening of this chapter. At one point, uh, Marcelo is like, I didn't know you were married, Max. And he's like, ah, my wife passed away. And he goes, good. Good. (laughs) Not good. Not good. Real bad. But good. (laughs) And uh, and, uh, Max says to Passos, uh, I got to stop drinking, you know, I'm going to do serious liver damage to myself. And there's a, it's a like throwaway joke, but foreshadows later in the game where Passos is like, oh, you can just buy a new one. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is pretty dark in <laughs> yeah. context of everything we learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I, d- I like that opening cut scene. A, can I a just lot. say like, that think- track that they're playing on that? boat like i want to be dancing with them i don't know why he's going to sleep Dude, drunk. Like, I want to, the, what they were doing that's my kind of life i don't relate to max Payne at all you know what i mean i'm the i mean i hopefully yeah. wouldn't live in such disgusting opulence but i mean just like you know in the sun <laughs> dance into a good like you know house track i'm down with that this is the third for those keeping track at home third dance sequence <laughs> yeah. i was game. about to say that and it's the only one that doesn't look like dog shit because I, this is something that s- games do, where they want to have a club scene or they want to have a party scene, but just you know the, the for, they don't want to model that many human beings next to each other. So you'll have a club with like ten people in it dancing, and yeah. it always looks super weird. This is the first one where it's like, well, yeah, it's a it's a boat. There's not going to be a hundred people on its deck going wild. There's going to be like five to six. Finally, it looks good. Yeah, it, and also I think they're using really tight camera angles yeah. here so you can't uh you can't see as many there's that weird we didn't really talk about it but with with max's uh expedition you know into the slums in the in the beginning of the kind of like you know slums chapter there are a lot of like ah look at the ass of this girl yeah. dancing in a kind of like fast and furious cinematography style yeah. way and it's just like it boy it's not as sexy as you think it is yeah <laughs> like, yeah these, yeah. these I mean, character models don't move particularly well like i feel like they're sort of arm animation and stuff i don't know that was like a critique of la noir and stuff right but like mm. it just looks a little stiff and like you can't really get a good booty shaking if your legs <laughs> and arms aren't like doing or you know it just it just doesn't come mm-hmm. off well <laughs> yeah I do think a a point of the graphics and in the models that they do well and and does kind of come come through on this level is making someone look kind of fake in the way that real people can look fake where it's like <laughs> looks like they've got a lot of plastic surgery and they're wearing like a lot of makeup you know you have sure. you have this this woman who almost immediately dies named Daphne Bernstein who Max you know wants I, I don't know why he's he's fixated on her particularly in this level but like you get a 40 second conversation with her and you immediately know you know kind of like you can you can assume a lot about her character through the kind of just like makeup and stuff that she's wearing, yeah. which is like really wants to fit in with all these like horrible rich people on yeah. the boat and maybe, you know, didn't have like the 
the childhood that would give you a perfectly unblemished face. Sure. And so it's just kind of like coded in in stuff. I don't I don't want this to be a Jacob critiques makeup <laughs> section, but I just think that they like do it well in the graphics here. Mm. It, it, Daphne is a weird character because sh- she basically sets in motion the events of the entire chapter because Max does get so fixated on her. But it's handled really poorly and that the player is often confused why she's that big of a deal. I think yeah. it boils down to you can find like her belongings throughout there and it's insinuated she owns the boat and that's about it. But yeah, I was mm-hmm. yeah, she for a lot of the chapter. I was so confused. I was like, was she a character from earlier in the game that I'm supposed to remember and care about? But not handled super well. Right, She's really uh, just great, like. Though another woman like for max yeah. to like be motivated by like he's only motivated by yeah. women until the last like third of this game so like mm-hmm. that's kind of it so it does feel where it's like oh she has a name you know it feels kind of important but she has absolutely nothing to do with like, why those guys are on the boat like what the money was like anything so yeah yeah i'm not even sure she has a speaking part in this game i don't know if she says anything no she does oh, i mean wait, she, what? she talks to she she talks to um like Marcel. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, on the okay. bridge or the poop deck. Yeah, and in, in that opening cutscene. Yeah. But you you don't necessarily learn anything about oh, her. No, in not that at all. Or anything. She um, probably just says like, "Woo, give me a shot." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the extent of um, a lot of that cutscene. I will. I will also say, uh, because this is chronologically kind of the first part yeah. of this game, um, Max looks pretty good. Yeah. His, like his hair is in place. He's he's yeah. clean shaven. It's it's funny that he's like he is absolutely in the depths of substance abuse and whatever. But he, from an aesthetic perspective, he doesn't look shot up. You know, he doesn't yeah. look sweaty. He's like, yeah, he's looking pretty nice. Well, the game tells you this is only his second job for the Bronco family, and also tells you that the first job was easy, and all he did was sleep with waitresses. Um, yeah. So there's definitely the implication that like. Max thinks his new like job is just to get drunk and stand around with a gun, you know. So I guess that which probably... it seems to be, yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, know, yeah. it's like they're encouraging him to do that. Yeah. Um. So then, so then you get drunk. Uh. You go to bed. You you wake up. The music's still playing. Um. But but there aren't aren't party sounds anymore. Um. Now I will say, I think this level is really interesting in how accurately i think it feels like being on a yacht (laughs) i've never been on a yacht but playing through it i was like i would totally believe that this is like a blueprint of one of these boats blake why don't you tell me why it sucks to play well first off i want to do say i do like the layout of the level aesthetically it reminds me a lot of a level in modern the first modern warfare in the plane that like opulent ass almost like uh, like oh, the bonus, yeah, the like bonus level, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it reminds me of that level a lot. Uh, the problem with boats is they're not open by any means. They funnel you through this level in very tight corridors. Uh, but this game also likes to kill you from around corners. So there is a lot of walking up, like, very narrow staircases, and there being seven guys you cannot see but somehow can see you. Um, and it becomes a trial and error of figuring out how to get up the staircase without dying while also contending with people not on the boat who are docked yeah. beside it also shooting you. Um, it is very frustrating. This game struggles a lot in tight corridors. Basically, any time it wants to funnel you through a very narrow passageway, I'm like checked out. Like It'll take me four to five tries to get through it, and that's a lot of this level. I think on mouse and keyboard that I don't know if this is the same with you, Jacob, but I feel like that's not as big of a deal. Um, oh, okay. I don't know. Just being able like if there's if it's a tight corridor, that sort of means that there's probably going to be less people. So I can easily mm. just kind of dodge and then quickly shoot four heads in one dodge jump. You know what I mean? Mm. Like there's this one sure. part where they're uh, getting like they're breaking into where the money would be. And there's like three guys there, and then there's a guy to the left by the bar or whatever. And like, if you just do mm. one jump, you're basically good. I don't know if that's mm. how it would be on the controller though. Like, is it as simple as that, or is it like a? 
I mean, perhaps a better player would have been <laughs> able to get it, but like the, the not for me. Okay. No. I find one of the the really challenging parts of this level is there are sections in which you are asked to go from a lower level to a higher level on mm-hmm. the boat that, and yeah, that's when what walking I was up about. yeah yeah like enemies have eyes on yeah. you way mm-hmm. before you have eyes on them mm-hmm. you know that it's it's like it's like you're going to a second story and everyone's in a balcony and they can shoot you in the face and mm-hmm. you can't even get your reticule like high enough to see them yeah and it's it's a it's just a weird decision because i can't imagine that they like didn't run into it being frustrating and it it kind of feels like they just they were like no we want the boat to feel like a boat so we're gonna do this i think Um, what would have fixed it is regenerating health right like it's just such a big punishment to go up and then be like okay well now i i had to use my uh pills because he shot me dead and then you know i had to kill him in the slow-mo you know post-death moment and then now you're screwed you just have to hide out and hope for the best Really quick, quick aside, I cannot believe I haven't talked about this in an earlier episode. That moment where time slows down and it gives you the chance to kill the person who's about to kill you. Uh-huh. Uh, I cannot believe the game doesn't give you extra ammo in those moments. Oh, yeah. The amount of fucking times I have died because it slows down and it's like, oh, you ready to do your super badass redemption shot that we're going to make a point of putting into the game? The amount of times it does that when my clip is empty, and then and these things are not short either. You can't <laughs> no. pause and you can't reload your it, checkpoint. Yeah. Do them. They are mm-hmm. like ten to fifteen seconds, and if you're out of ammo, you get no more, and you just slowly watch yourself fall. And this happens <laughs> over and fucking over because you go through ammo so quickly in this game. It drives me up a fucking wall. It happened to me so many times on this fucking level. A similar thing that would, I haven't experienced the running out of ammo thing as much, but what will happen to me is Max will just get shot at an angle where he just can't hit the guy. You yeah. know, it's kind of like his shoulder is stuck in a wall or something. Like he just can't pivot enough to shoot the guy who shot him. And it's, and it's the same situation of just, you just got to watch this animation of Max very slowly falling to the ground. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's weird that you can't. Just be like, nah, just kill me now. It also does a really bad job of letting you know which character you're supposed to be aiming at. Because there might be four people right next to each other. And you're like, it it doesn't let you just shoot anyone in this moment. So you are struggling to aim and figure out who it is. Do what? On mouse and keyboard, I will say you can actually shoot other people. But, you, uh, I mean, you're still going to die if you it, don't kill the right guy. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's actually a weird calculation, which is, like, if you want, you can take out... You have this extended period of slow motion, uh-huh. but, like, if you don't sh- shoot the guy who shot you, you're going to die. Yeah. And so it's a little bit of, like, uh, how much ammo do I have in my clip? Can I afford to take out these other people? Yeah. It's not... It's not that strategic, but there is a, a little extra layer to it. And it's fucking wild to me, though, that there's a mechanic built in to give you a second chance that doesn't replenish your ammo to when you. It's just like a weird oversight to me. They, realism. It is, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. There's there's actually a lot of things in this game that I guess maybe fit into Rockstar's idea or ambition of realism that just don't. I mean, I think this is a criticism of a lot of their games yeah that don't fit in with just like convenience of game design or just quality of life for the player like enemies will flank very hard in this game which by itself is fine but often levels or combat arenas are not built with the player's like peripheral vision in mind Mm, so the amount of times i die to a flanking enemy just because I didn't see them running is like through the roof. Like it happens all the time where I haven't noticed whatever character they're sending around. So I die to something I can't see off screen. Um, that, that's like when I think about it, that's a big criticism of mine is that and stuff like, you know, the second chance bullet time thing, just like not being built well into the game. Anyway. It's a it's a toughie. Yeah, these were these were hard levels. Um, oh, and the thing we haven't said about this boat is that it's in the Panama Canal. 
It's like it's yeah. in the kind of like series of locks that you go through in the Panama Canal, which I think just as a scene setting thing cool. is really cool. Um, and and it, it's it's just kind of a like, hey, this is a real life thing that's weird. The mm-hmm. the fact that like when you're a boat going through here, you have to kind of like sit while they raise or lower the water. I don't know exactly how it works, but you know, so you're not, you're not like in the ocean, you're in this very artificial environment. And that means that people can kind of like drive up on the side and shoot at the boat because it's, it's in the middle of these two things. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually you get off the boat and you're like, I'm, I'm going to find Daphne because I care about her for whatever reason. Um, and Passos is like, Marcelo doesn't want to do that. And then Max is like, well, fuck you. I'm going to do it. And Passos is eventually like, nah, all right, I'll come too. Yeah. Um, you, you catch them like about to make a getaway from this event mm-hmm. and Passos, I guess to keep up with appearances, you know, has to basically put his life on the line just so you don't second guess what's going on in your whole yeah he's really close to death for just keeping up appearance yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's so zealous he He, like runs up first and shit i'm like why is he that's kind of weird you know but he also like an interesting like detail in this is he bails out of the whole thing basically after the first encounter he does not go into the museum with you oh yeah you're right yeah yeah, he doesn't want to go over the yeah. fucking zip line. I guess that was like he's scared Which of heights. I don't under I don't understand why that part fucking whips ass. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> Anytime you get a meat yes. shield, like that's good gaming. You know, even if it doesn't mean yeah. anything, it's like I I feel like this guy is taking it for me. So thank you. It's so <laughs> bloody. We've talked too. about the the gore in this yeah. game before, but so the so the scene here is that there's a zip line kind of across the canal. There's a guy going across and Max jumps on his back and then is like shooting at people as he rides it. And the dudes just tear this guy up. <laughs> it's like fucking awesome. it's like they are, you know, <laughs> he is not their friend anymore. And they are just going to try and shoot through Jacob, him to get to can you. Can I ask you something? Jacob, Zach, can I ask you all something? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Did, did, did you play Bioshock Infinite? Yeah. Oh yeah, big time. You remember that part where you go through the museum exhibit? Uh, uh I feel like there are several. Yeah, of I feel those, like that whole but, town yeah. is just museums. <laughs> Can you believe they did that in this game too? <laughs> I really like this museum. It's awesome. I, I like thought it, it was super cool. I like it because it's not like a super badass museum. It's like a kind of shitty exhibit. You go yeah, through. exactly. It's like shitty um, old desktop computers yeah, yeah. with like I don't know if uh, do you if are those monitors called CRT monitors? Yeah, for they old would computers be. Yeah. like, but mm-hmm. yeah, but they're like really shitty boxy computers you can find around this level. It's really rad. Yeah, I agree, and it, it just felt. It did not feel like it was there for you to be like, and now you're going to learn about the Panama Canal. It's like, I, you probably could have read the text or yeah. whatever, but it's like Bioshock. It's like, and now stand in front of this animatronic as it gives you a spiel about mm-hmm. Columbia or whatever. And this was like, nah, you got a shotgun. You're going to just fucking destroy all this stuff. There um, is nothing better in video games than like display cases you can find the the like, I guess, museum type where they're glass on all four sides and you can just obliterate yeah. them. And there are rooms full of those in this game. And dude, watching those fucking things blow up looks so cool. Yeah, um, this is a game where, for the most part, shotguns are kind of useless. Um, they just have, like, they have they have a lot of spread. It's hard to hit people from far away. But in this level in particular, you get, like, a semi-automatic shotgun, and mm. everyone is real close up, and you are just, just blitzing through these guys, or at least I was. I actually really like the shotguns in this game. I use them pretty frequently. Uh, maybe I'm never maybe it's another control thing. <laughs> they... They uh they don't give you a ton of ammo for them, so I'll pick one up and just click the the right thumbstick in and just like unload my entire clip into a group of guys real quick. It takes out a good number of them. I find I mean it's like they're very it's it's one of the interesting things about the physics of this game is that they're actually rendering bullets yeah. and and with a shotgun they are actually doing a spread they're not just doing kind of like a cone of damage in front of you yeah and so you can get 
lucky and kind of like hit a dude with a shot, you know, even if your aim wasn't on, or you can be pointing right at him and miss because you've got kind of mm-hmm. shot the stuff inside shotgun shells going in all directions here. Sure, yeah. Um, but anyway, so you fight through this museum. It's cool. It's a shitty museum. Uh, you get to the top, pile of dead people. Just like, oops, there they all are. There's our friend Daphne. <laughs> Everyone's Daphne, dead. Man. Yeah, I... Well, Zach, let me ask you this, because uh-huh. you, you played the game for the first time, like, last year, right? No, uh, like, a month ago. Basically, oh, the okay. week yeah, before you recently. started recording this. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, this is basically the main nugget of the plot twist that comes, like, 30 minutes after. What did you, what did you think of the big plot twist in this game? Um, so, I guess, well, just, like the like that max was like recruited by paso specifically no 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 like the organ harvesting oh the organ harvesting (laughs) um yeah i guess i didn't expect that to be happening you know um Mm. it's sort of i guess it doesn't really come up again like it's kind of it feels almost like a shock moment like just for the sake of it right like you just Mm. come in and there's this doctor you know packing up you know organs and shit but otherwise, it's more like just a way to vilify these people, right? Like, oh, because because ha- my un- go- sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, I mean, just it, it's a way to make these criminals look even more villainous than just like being sure. oppressors. It's like, well, how could they oppress them? Oh, they take their organs. That's like the most insane, crazy way of you know looking like a evil you know government or whatever. Well, my understanding was that the the massive bodies you find in the museum level were for the organ harvesting. I mean, granted, they're not Ooh. being kept alive, but that was always my understanding was they were for that, which I had thought like recontextualized that whole scene. You know, I never, I didn't even think about that. But it there is a connection between those people and the the you know like militarized police because you like find a yeah. file in their like uh, in their you know offices later or whatever that ties mm. them so that's actually an interesting connection i didn't make that yeah that's that's it's, always like been my read on that specific moment yeah yeah there are several breadcrumbs that lead up to the organ harvesting thing but they're they're real far apart i i think it's pretty hard to it's not something that you you find out the twist and then you're like, oh, of course, all that yeah. was pointing to this. It's yeah. more something that's like you have to replay it. And then maybe mm. if you know, you know, about the things coming up, you can you can see. But it's yeah, it, it, it's always just implied like there's something more going on here. What but are, that's pretty much all you get. Was there anything earlier in the game that you noticed that was kind of like those breadcrumbs you were mentioning? Um, I'm trying to think because I feel like there. W- well, it was the um, uh, in the in the level where the um, uh, the police raid is happening through the slums. You see, you see the cops basically handing people off. Oh right, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, And and my understanding is that they are handing those people off to be organ harvested. Yeah, I think um, the yeah. uh, the cop that you befriend actually says that, like, on your way yeah, to that right. hotel. They, those people were never booked, so but this is where they were brought. So now it's like, you gotta yeah. go mm-hmm. and figure it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is, I mean, I, it's a kind of weird... I feel like in most stories, the, it would be sex trafficking, you know, that <laughs> seems kind of like a more... This is, I, I hate to say normal, but a more expected thing, like something that's kind of talked about is like, oh, people get sex trafficked. Yeah. Um, so the fact that it's organ harvesting is kind of a a wild left turn. Um, what was didn't yeah. Metal Gear Solid Five also have an organ harvesting subplot? Which I mean, only what did that game have? <laughs> sure. But then that only came out like a couple years later, though. Which is just an interesting coincidence for two games to do it at the same time. That is that is weird. 
Uh, but anyway, so, so you know, we finished with this boat level. We flashed back to the present day where our friend Wilson De Silva is, is like, Max, you want to do something good after doing all this fucked up shit. I'm going to drive you to this hotel. I'm not going to tell you what's happening here. <laughs> yeah. You just go and do what you do in this hotel. He also, like, I, I mean, I don't know how literal he was being, but he also tell, he kind of tells Max to just go die. He's like, if you really yeah. want to die for a good cause, I'm going to put you in the fucking bowels of hell right now. Well, this is a... Everything in this level seems like Max should die at the end, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and then he I, just doesn't. I wanted to die during this level. It is fucking <laughs> grim, man. It is, like, God... Um, so there's a, there's a weird drawn out opening to this where, again, there is this implication of stealth (laughs) where Max picks up a gun and, and he tapes a water bottle to it and he, and he puts duct tape all around the water bottle, like a little makeshift silencer. And it spends so much time on this action that then when you shoot the first two guys and immediately it seems like everyone knows where you are, it's just like, well, what the hell was that for? <laughs> yeah. It got, Zach, it got... have you successfully stealthed through any of this? Never. <laughs> <laughs> and I never will try. I was like, because I listened to the last episode and you're like, if you kill people fast enough, you could stealth. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I'll give it a college try. Didn't do it. And I was like, fuck it. I, I actually reloaded the checkpoint two different times just to see if I could like nail those first two shots without alerting anyone could not do it at all. I mean, I even, I got both of them before they fired back and still the other two guys were just like, there he is. Yeah. Um, There's like a law. There's like a drawn out dialogue moment too, where Max is like, a shot in here would sound like a marching band. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going Sam Fisher <laughs> on these it's assholes. So, it's so funny that <laughs> that I, I just I, I noticed this for the first time this round and I just started laughing where there's so much on the silence. He's like, gotta keep it quiet. And then literally the first gun in the level is a grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like, get a grenade launcher. What? Yeah, it's in that oh, room. It's yeah, it's it's right next to oh. those first two guys. There's a grenade launcher, and I think you're probably glad you didn't get it because i killed myself with it <laughs> fairly immediately that i just kind of shot it into a corner and just blew up that's pretty funny fuck yeah yeah um, I, so go ahead oh it's just i don't understand like the need for i guess it's like almost the realism thing right it's like yeah i guess if you're going into this place where there's you know you're trying yeah. to sneak in and figure out what's going on you would want to be stealthy but just drop it literally 15 seconds later like that's i don't know yeah and and this is also kind of the most it's the most die hardy yeah, max yeah. ever looks you know he's got he's got the shaved head and the wife beater and the and the pistol you know it's like he really looks like he's about to kind of do some shit and then he does you know the same shit he always does he kills baby yeah he kills <laughs> but this this level it almost also feels like uh an old Max Payne level where you would go through like apartment complexes and hotels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna just, say this is like the most reminiscent like, of the original games. Sorry. Yeah, like they get under your skin just with how grimy they are. But man, this level is dark. Like even Max, Max will comment on what's going on in the game occasionally. Be like, man, shit sucks, huh? But in this level, Max is like, this is terrible like yeah this shit, I like, is, this shit is horrible y'all like it's i fucked. do i do really like we're jumping around this level a little bit but there's that line where he's on the top of the building and and the kind of like leader of the ufe or whatever is like we're giving people opportunities and max is like you're turning people into fucking glue. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It's like, like it's a good it's a good line. If you can get Max Payne to feel something, you know you're a heinous human being. <laughs> <laughs> this level finally gets Max to be like God, fuck this shit. Like um so you you continue through Oh, here's something that's on the both the boat and this level and one level 
previous that I think we didn't talk about. There are pianos yeah. through this game yeah. that you can find and kind of play a couple notes. And mm-hmm. in the first one, you, at the first one's in the uh, in the funeral parlor, and Max really sucks. And then on the boat, he's like, there's something there, but I can't get it quite. And then on this level, he's like, oh, here we go. And he just plays the Max Payne theme. He just kind of yeah. goes like, oh, that's what that is? Yeah. As someone who learned, wrote, and recorded the Max Payne theme for this podcast, it's not that hard. Max did not need seven different levels to figure it out. It's <laughs> a little unrealistic for my tastes. To me, it feels kind of like another almost remedy holdover. Yeah, for that sure. it, it doesn't it doesn't match with how serious the rest of it is. That he's yeah. just kind of like have it feels like an Alan Wake thing almost. Yeah. That he would like happily play the piano for a second. In I, this I, way. I, I was kidding. I really do love that Easter egg that you can play the piano. So I think it's really funny. So Zach, you didn't know it was the the Max Payne. Theme. Not at all. No, I <laughs> I was just I was just like, like oh, he's just this, playing. I was like, this is really deep, probably or not. You know, I was like, this is very metaphorical, right? He's like, then came harmony finally, and I was like, what does that mean? You know, like in his heart and his life, like is this like the culmination? It is. It is kind of like um, it's in Max Payne one, right, where he realizes he's in a video game. Yeah. This is like the most fourth wall yeah. nod I feel like this game gives us of yeah. like, you know, he feels like he's he's kind of right. Um, OK, so so we have this scene where uh, y- you shoot a little bit, then Max opens a door. There are a bunch of people in a real bad way. And then he opens another door. Well, and you're in. He, he also in there is the leader of the game. Yes. Yeah. Who is. Yeah. You know, he's like that. I. I like that moment a lot because for a lot of the game, he is this elusive gang member that is like fucking shit up way more than a street gang probably should. And then you see him here and he is held captive by, you know, whatever is going on in that next room. And the look of defeat on this man and just like utter despair is like a really awesome moment. I mean, not like awesome in the sense that i like seeing people being (laughs) brutalized but like as an emotional moment you see like whatever is in that next room is so bad it has broken one of the primary antagonists of this game right it kind of reminds me this is going to be a real deep uh filmic reference but i i and this could be wrong because i haven't seen it in a while but i feel like in the rundown there's sort of this moment where like you meet like the sort of locals who like are attacking you. The Rock meets the locals. The film with The Rock. Uh, I don't know if you <laughs> all know this film. Classic early two thousands. Um, but he goes to like a South American jungle and meets mm-hmm. people working at like a mine or something. And Christopher Walken is like enslaving them or whatever. And you know you fight the, the locals, but then like here come the military people that like destroy the locals' home. So and then you like see the sadness yeah. of like the locals that you were fighting before. And it's, I don't know, it's just like a weird, powerful moment that sort of humanizes them. And it's like, oh, we know who the actual villain is after, you know, like, they're sort of a For term. sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a testament to that moment that it can in- instantly make you sympathize yeah. with, like, someone you hated for the majority of the game. Like, there's no, not even a build up to it. Like, Max is, like, completely taken off guard. And Max in almost any other moment of this game would have shot him yeah. right then and there. And twice in this level, he like spares the dude's life. Cause he's like, this I'm is, yeah, this is the guy that killed women. Like, that's just the thing yeah. that he hates the most. Like, and he lets <clears throat> yeah. him do his own thing. Cause he realizes like what he's been subjugated against. I don't think the game is going so far as to think that, like say that Max knows like larger societal, like oppression or whatever, or realizes that, but sure. You know, I yeah, mean, Max there's... understands stealing people's organs is bad. Yeah. He's got he's, he, <laughs> he at least knows he does that. understand that. There is this I I do have kind of a problem with with Serrano because we've we've talked about race a lot uh yeah. just kind of we've talked around race a lot. Um but there is this thing where he is I, I don't know how to put this less bluntly, kind of like the darkest villain you have, like skin wise, physically, yeah, you know, right. it's like Max is mostly fighting non-white people here, mm. but, but Serrano is kind of who, at least, you know, we in America would say like a black guy. Um, and, and for him to kind of be the one that's reduced to this, like basically animalistic state 
where where like mm. I don't think he even says a word in this level. He just kind of No, like, he he talks <laughs> to the doctor, I think, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Does he? I thought he just mm. kind of I, I guess yeah so you know then later on he he kills the doctor who's doing this and max yeah. kind of gives him gives him the mercy and it's like in a smarter game i feel like maybe this could be an intentional commentary but but in this it i don't know i just don't feel like i can give rockstar the credit of like thinking that they're doing smart things with race here oh, and to me it's a little uncomfortable that the the villain who is reduced the most and maybe made the most sympathetic but also i feel like kind of has the most humanity taken from them is also you know just just the the darkest guy you know sure. <laughs> that there is there's some weird stuff going on here and i would i would love to read it as a commentary but i kind of also think it's just them working with the tropes that already exist Sure. I, I don't know. Th- it's it's tough. <laughs> I don't know if I, I I don't think I necessarily thought that way about it. Like my my reading of that moment basically can be boiled down to being like, oh wow, they humanized the bad guy. But I I maybe should have read more into it. Like you know what you're saying. But yeah, yeah well, and I don't know because they do they do humanize him, mm-hmm. but but they kind of humanize sure. him by just beating the shit out of him, and it's like uh, sure, see yeah, he yeah. also got and then he's I don't gone know. after it's, that. It's he, tough. He has no part in like the airplane or airport or anything like that. Like he just well, yeah. I mean presumably he's just dead, dead yeah. because the building blows. Up. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh, hope all those people yeah. got out. Oops. Um, so okay, so that so so Max has this confrontation with a surgeon that I do think is truly disturbing yeah. because the surgeon is not like a guy with a gun. He's like, "I'm a doctor. I help people," and it's like <laughs> clearly he is not helping people. Well, um, he is of certain status. <laughs> he's, he's giving some people new livers, and you know maybe yeah. people need new livers. <clears throat> um, and and Max is truly disgusted by him and let Serrano kill him. Basically, you know, he's like, "You you deserve this kill. Go ahead." Yeah. Um, and then Max decides that uh, he should just blow up this building. He finds some C four and he's like, "Why the fuck not? This is a terrible it's, place." It's like, oh, it's cool, I guess, but it's like it's uncharacteristic even for a game this bombastic that Max is like. I'm gonna take this fucking building down in the middle <laughs> of a major ass fucking city. I'm just gonna blow it up. I mean, it looks cause... pretty. It, it looks like it was bound to be like destroyed anyway. You know, it was kind of an old. old <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was it just was finishing the job for free. You know, you but you can't like you can't brush that under the rug. Like they well, they those are controlled demolitions. They are they're specifically. Well, yeah, scheduled. but he put them on the columns. <laughs> you know, he, yeah, they were all <laughs> yeah, marked red. Supposed to blow up. But yeah, but anyone in the city would be like, ah, that was scheduled for thursday it's monday what (laughs) the fuck is going on here well i'll tell you i'll tell you what this feels like to me and kind of kind of why i really like this moment and then it was slightly disappointed that it wasn't the last chapter is it kind of feels like the end of fight club right Uh, you know that that, and i I know i was just listening to you on on a previous (laughs) podcast talk about how you don't like fight club and i have problems with it but I love the end when they just watch all the buildings blow oh, up and yeah, there's visually. kind of an implication of of like maybe the building they're in is going to yeah. blow up. I'll although give you, it you know, I'll it give doesn't. you that visually that's an amazing scene. For um, sure. And so I love so Max Max sets everything to blow. He walks out on on the roof. There are a bunch of dudes there. He kind of argues with one, you know, kind of limply for a while. And then it's just like, fuck it. And he just like pushes the detonator while he's standing on the roof of the building that he's set to explode. <clears throat> and that's cool. Like, it was. I yeah. like that moment. It's unfortunate the ensuing gameplay moments suck, but yeah. I had to drop I had to drop the difficulty down to easy to get through this moment. I was not having it. Um it's it's on a timer, but it won't tell you. So just randomly if you take longer than the game thinks is necessary the building just blows up and it sends you back like through 
four different combat encounters. Um, you, you'll be fighting like seven guys and be like, all right, I think I can get through this. I have one thing of pills left and like one clip. And then the game's like, what if we just, what if the building started shaking and you could no longer yeah. aim at everyone, but they're fucking marksmen. So they'll hit you while there's a goddamn 8.0 earthquake under their feet and then in between that as you try to go from encounter to encounter uh people will just jump around corners and cap you was uh, th- that's that's an accurate like, uh, description yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's a very cool moment that like instantly was soured for me because the ensuing gameplay afterwards was so mind-numbingly frustrating like it like kind of ruined that whole badass john mclean thing that was going on on top of that building for me i'll tell you this is the one level in this game that i haven't beaten on new york minute mode uh which Mm. is the the kind of like timed arcade thing and it's because this last part is so hard and it's at the end of such a long level and it's Mm. you you don't get you know if you die you go back to the beginning of the level Mm. and so it's like there's another one of those armored dudes up here that you just have to shoot like 500 times and it's it is it is frustrating. Okay, it's frustrating. Yeah. It it does to your point, it feels like the last level of a game. But like mm-hmm. also it reminds me of so many last levels of games that I got through th- by the skin of my teeth and I don't remember the actual ending cutscene after that cuz I'm so pissed off. Like I was so frustrated with this moment. I I, I got to um, say the the big armored dude with the minigun or whatever. I I don't know how I beat him before the first playthrough because, like, what is it, two days ago that I played this? Like, I just couldn't fucking do it. I just, I was shooting his head and I was like, I should, this should stagger him at some point. Like, I thought that was the idea, like, stagger him and then Mm -hmm. get some more shots in. But then the last time I did it, I just kind of shot, like, his, like, his neck area and that kind of killed him pretty quick. I don't know if I just died enough and the game was like, it has like a weird sort of dynamic difficulty where it's like, yeah, hey, just have it. Just get, he's dead. All right, fuck it. Continue. Oh, sure. Um, but yeah, that, that guy is like ridiculous. Like he just doesn't fit with the rest of the game essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I, he's uh, the most gamey character. I think I got lucky on it. I died once to him. And by this point I was playing on easy, which is yeah. like super forgiving. Um, but I just like was fed up. And as soon as lo- I loaded in, like, hit bullet time aimed at his head and put like two clips in it and i just ate all the bullets he was (laughs) shooting at me and the game was forgiving enough on that difficulty that it didn't kill me immediately but i'm still not sure if there's an optimum way to kill him because it's like how on a harder difficulty is anyone going to get like 20 headshots in a row yeah to take Uh, well i'll i'll tell you because i i mean i did it but it's Uh, um i you know i was i was dual wielding revolvers and i just did a good old shoot dodge and put about you know 14 revolver shots into him and those are those are strong bullets and so it did Mm -hmm. it but it i you know i immediately died the first time and so it was still still annoying zach oh we cannot pass this no without me asking you this so this level is called the great american savior of the poor and this is not something that i intentionally did before playing these levels you know or before kind of asking you to be on this but you have a video that i like a lot that i can't i can't remember the exact title but would you kind of recount your your video on Resident Evil 4, just in brief. Yeah. Uh, so I made a video on Resident Evil 4 called uh, Resident Evil 4 and the American Hero, or whatever. Sort of a, I guess, a, not a misleading title, but one that doesn't play, you know, fully show its hand. But it's sort of about how Leon is an American badass, and but he goes to this, like, third world country that sort of resembles, like, y- you know, like, Middle Eastern like radical oh, I mean, it's, it's islam spain right wait what oh but oh but yes it resembles yeah it's not mm-hmm. like you know it's they're spanish or whatever but it, it sort of looks relevant to the times right like they're trying to create you know enemies that are like oh hey here's a hot topic and they reference um american like interventionism in like mm-hmm. you know the world uh and i say that sort of the game kind of dehumanizes these people and makes them all sort of like quote savages i suppose um so that's kind of what that game inadvertently does but in this game almost 
tries to like critique that sort of thing, right? Like you have these characters that say that Max Payne is like pretends to be this action hero, right? They even use that specific phrasing, like uh, De Silva calls him American or an action hero, or whatever. And this, yeah, the name of this chapter, the Great American Savior, or whatever. So it's sort of like playing on that, like he thinks mm-hmm. he's going to come in and you know save the day or whatever, but he was really being used as a tool of these people to you know further their you know further the government victor's agenda or whatever yeah the, I mean, there's a moment where you know a character like sarcastically says to max and uh, like oh you're the great american savior of the poor yeah. like they call out that specifically you know right yeah and it's it's another case of we talked about lampshading last yeah, week yeah. and it's like is how how much credit can we give the game you know, like, how much is this just the last enemy of a video game saying, oh, I don't know, you killed a lot of people, too, right. in that kind of, like, lazy attempt at moral relativity? Is that it? Yeah. And <laughs> and how much is this, you know, an actual intended message? You know, it's like, they have talked a lot about Max being a dumb guy who comes here and kills thoughtlessly. Like, it's not... It's not a message they just threw in at the end that has yeah. been a you know through line throughout basically the entire game. I think my hot take like almost itchy trigger finger take on this is that AAA games are not are inherently not equipped to have conversations like this. Correct. Just by nature of the games they have to be. Mm-hmm. Um it's Kind of like how people wanted to fucking wax poetic about how God of War was this new nuanced take on violence and the previous God of War games. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's still gore porn. I don't care that Kratos thought twice about the time he killed someone. He still ripped yeah. a, someone's jaw off their face and the game zoomed in on it. Like, but these games can, but by the very nature of what a AAA game has to be, which is unless it's Madden or something, often hyper violent. <laughs> have you have you read about the NFL? I think Madden counts. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Weird example, I guess. <laughs> uh, but like, just by the very nature of like the state of the AAA game, any type of message you want to have in your game like this often is just immediately undercut by your game having to be violent because that's what these games are. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm-hmm. necessarily think that violence would negate the message that I'm like that it might be saying right like mm. he was directing his violence in the wrong places he was attacking like the, the sort of the gangs or whatever like he was being led in a specific direction like his, he was a tool of violence and like at the mm-hmm. end it could probably be like hey he sort of helps beat back the people who use violence badly like it's sort of a good cop there are there are bad cops in the world and you just have to get rid of them sort of idea probably mm. like that's what it seems and to I, say i mean that is really interesting in context of the next level which we yeah. won't play until next week but like if you know where the story is going th- your next targets are not not who you've been shooting for the rest of the game right sorry mm-hmm. to like speak about those later levels you i accidentally played oh, no, chapter 13 i thought i was supposed to uh so it was on my mind but like th- I, yeah, I don't think necessarily violence goes against what it's saying, um, but I don't think, you, you know, to get all leftist or whatever, like being made in a capitalist uh, society and, you know, uh, being a million, millions of dollars to make this project or whatever and, you know, trying to make a profit or whatever, I don't think it's going to say anything too substantive about anything in general. It's just yeah. going to be like, man, these guys are bad, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. Sure. For sure. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's just, it's so, I think this is why I am so obsessed with this game, is that it, it like, it doesn't feel fake in the way that I think some messages do. I mean, honestly, like, kind of like Bioshock Infinite. You know, it's like, this game feels like there is more under the surface than infinite has but it's just so messy and so weird that it 
you know, it's like, I want to spend time untangling what this is about in a way that I don't with a lot of games with a more kind of like superficial politics. Um, but I, but I don't know what lies kind of at the bottom of it. it it's, it's really yeah. hard to come to a like definitive answer. I'm like, this is what it is. I think for me, I, I, I don't know what this necessarily says about me, but like when it comes to a Rockstar games specifically, I'm less interested in their like political or overarching yeah. messages their games have, especially something like a Grand Theft Auto or whatever, where it's basically like slapping me in the face with it. And the way these games are like interesting, introspective slash self loathing games about Dan Hauser himself, which granted I've just taken a left turn on what we're talking about, but like, I, I try not to like get too focused on the politics of these games because they are so messy and I think like they don't necessarily get to the point they might be striving for for whatever reason, you know. Mhm. Yeah, and and I think what what this game does well is painting a pretty incredible portrait of a horrible self-destructive man. There- um, and that's why I find it kind of annoying that he blows up this building and it seems like, ah, here's the end of Max. And then Passos comes in and he's like, hey, I have a helicopter. <laughs> Let's just zoom on out of here. Yeah. Uh, quick, qu- Quickly to wrap up my thoughts on that. There's maybe oh, yeah, an interesting conversation we should have. Maybe even just next episode about uh, Max Payne's relationship to characters like uh, uh, the 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 other Max Payne in Grand Theft Auto V, whose name I cannot remember, uh, Michael, and, like, Arthur Morgan and characters like that, where Dan Hauser is just, like, writing himself as these broken men. But anyway, maybe for the next episode. Yeah, so... So what are we left with at the end of these these three chapters? I will tell you, from, from a gameplay perspective... I kind of feel like the game keeps getting better. Like I'm enjoying each set of chapters yeah. more than the previous three. Um, th- these certainly have some frustrating points, but like I would just play through these chapters again right now um, because of how much fun I'm having with this game. Um, and it and it does feel like it's it's kind of like okay, we're really in the end game now. You know, mm. we've we've discovered and immediately solved the organ harvesting plot um max kind of knows what's going on more than he has in the past you know let's let's put the pedal to the metal and finish this so i'm i'm just jazzed about it but what are y'all feeling i'm excited too i i I don't think we should have glossed over passes as exit from this game though because oh that's right he's just gone go ahead He, he dips out he gets a really convenient exit um, because his girlfriend is pregnant, Max, I guess, can't kill him. Um, uh, but everything in this game seems everything, everything we know about Max in this game, plus what Passos did to Max seems to insinuate Max would have fucking murdered him instantly. Um, but he is just conveniently written out of the plot. He's like, I'm leaving. And Max is like, sounds good, bro. I forgive you for well, Passos, fucking up my entire life. Passos is having a family. That's what Max yeah. is a family man. Yeah, you know well, and he's has having a family. I don't think we've said this with Giovanna, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the the pregnant woman, and yeah. so it's like, yeah, you like her, so I guess I won't kill her husband. Right. Yeah, it's a very convenient way to just wrap up that dude's story and get him on out of there, so we can get on to the next thing. Uh, but to your question, I I'm excited. I I played through. Uh, I I shot two of the dudes in the next level because I I just wanted to keep playing. I was like, well, I'll just kill one or two more people. <laughs> but um, I I'm very excited. The cutscene to the next chapter that we're gonna be talking about next week. Uh, that opening cutscene is super super cool. Um, and very interesting. I actually do not remember what happens for the rest of the game. Um, so I'm excited to see where it goes. I feel like I'm about to play it all fresh and new. Spoiler. I know there's an airport at some point and Pe- like a dude with his limbs blown off, but I don't remember anything else about the game. That's in the beginning of the game, Jacob. Don't shush me. <laughs> that's true. It's like the die. first thing you see that's in the, the game. Uh, that's all I can say. People will die and people will cry. And that's it. That's all I can say. So, Zach, playing this game yeah. as you did in 2020, um, like when you reach the end, what. 
Were you like, dang, that was a good game? Or were you like, I want another Max Payne? Or were you like, this was a mess? <laughs> what, what were your feelings about it? That's an interesting question. I don't know. I'm sort of, I'm almost ambivalent about it, I guess. Like, I want to, what I kind of want is like an arcade mode where I can just cut all of the cutscenes. Not to say that like the story isn't worth anything or isn't interesting, but like after one go through, I feel like now I just kind of want to perfect the gameplay and stuff and just have no cutscenes, just go through, kill everyone as much as possible and play my own tunes over it. And because that's like, that's what I do. Like eventually, like I beat Dark Souls just listening to like my own playlists and stuff or, you know, I'm playing like Doom Eternal and I'm replaying levels to like garage rock albums and stuff because i'm like oh this will be a good uh good like driving music or whatever keep up the keep up the well, hype i'll tell you there is there is an arcade mode called new york minute in this game but unfortunately you still have to watch a lot of the cutscenes because <sighs> they are loading screens <laughs> so you don't want that uh, but not all of them you can skip some of them i know um but that will i think take us to the end of this podcast unless we've got anything else uh zach you want to you want to tell us about what what you do on the internet when you're not <laughs> uh just on on a podcast what? being a lovely guest i don't know i do like i do a bunch of dumb shit like i don't know i, I <laughs> i've written some videos if you go to my channel with my name zach fraser z-a-c uh f-r-a-z-i-e-r um you'll find some stuff there i edit some videos i interview people i uh i what else do i do i talk to people you know just general stuff <laughs> he's a good boy and i there are two long interviews uh between me and zach on his channel so if nothing else go check out those they're fun uh blake how about you what you got going on fucking nothing man digital media is imploding from the inside out i guess that's what imploding means um no one <laughs> n with all the jobs are going out the window so i'm just fucking kicking it on easy street look uh look at polygon in a couple months maybe there'll be a rock star story up there i don't know uh other than that maybe. i may never write another thing follow me on twitter at metallica's rad where i'm not tweeting because i got nothing to promote uh that's it having a great time over here in covid land <laughs> And and no, I well, hold am on, still hold on. suspended. Sorry, I will say, I will say, I will say. Um, I, I'm doing in in the interim while uh, freelancers are kind of getting cut out of a lot of things. I am f I like focusing a lot more on game query. So there's like aside from this show, there's a ton of stuff GQ's doing right now that you can look up. Like our zine is on itch.io for free that Jacob's in and uh, like Ki Hoon Chan uh, is in and Cian Mar and like a ton of great writers. And then AJ and me are still doing our movie review show, which is basically this show, but about video game movies. Hopefully we'll do the Max Payne movie soon. And then we have our normal show, uh, Game Query. That's still trucking. So go listen to all that. But I don't have any writing to promote or anything like that. Oh, that's it. And and then my, my Twitter is suspended, so you can't follow me on there. But <laughs> I will have, uh, by the time this episode is out, there will be a new video out by me about music in horror games. I think it's good. Uh, go watch that and and uh, get Jack to unban me. That's oh, it. Yeah. Um, until next time, thanks, Zach and Blake. Uh, and thank you, all of you, for listening to Something Rotten. Mm -hmm.